Welcome to another weekly update for the Laravel microservice course. This one includes some interesting usages of Laravel components and also an all important upgrade from Laravel version 11, which is how I started the course or what I started the course with to Laravel 12, which at this time of recording is now the current version. So you should have some interesting stuff in here, which is really useful to you. Let's go down the list uh, one by one. So the first thing is validating DTOs. So what we have here is a subscription validator, and this could validate really anything which implements the arrayable interface. So if you remember the arrayable interface, which we used in the last one, simply has one method to array, and you use it in order to cast an object to an array. So we take an object which implements arrayable, and then we can apply a bunch of rules to that array. So we are using Laravel's validator. So here you'll see Illuminate Validation Factory. This produces a validator. When we say this factory make here, I've called it validator, but basically that is the validator factory. That makes a validator and also validates our object against a set of rules. So quite interesting usage there. You might have used, or dare say you will have used, Laravel's built-in validation to validate like items or keys on a request or on models, but maybe you've never used it for DTOs. And this just proves that you can really use it for anything because you're just checking an array of rules against an array of properties. So hopefully you'll find that one interesting. And then what we did is we go on to test this. So I created a subscription validator test. And an interesting thing about this test is we can get some reuse or go quite abstract by actually using an anonymous class instead of creating a concrete class. What I did here was I created a anonymous class and anonymous classes can implement interfaces. And so that's how I created sort of an object which I could validate. So I created this subscription object using an anonymous class. Then I simply pass that in to the validate method on that validator which we created. So uh, a bit of innovation there, hopefully you'll enjoy that one. So as well as uh, validating a successful validation, we also tested that an exception is thrown if validation fails. All right, so let's go back and see. Uh, then what I did was I worked on fixing some broken tests, which might not sound like the most interesting lesson in the world, but there was uh, an interesting piece of PHP stan stuff in there. So I'm looking for PHP stan .neon. So what was happening was in my subscription mapper, because of the way it works and because the object which was being used to take properties to map was allowing null for some properties as well as the different types, string booleans, etc. But the object which I was mapping to was more strict and didn't allow nulls for its uh, equivalent properties, then our PHP stand was producing a lot of errors of the same type for that file, about 15 errors all of the same type. And so it just made sense to actually use the PHP stand config to suppress that error. And so the way you can do that is you can add an ignore errors key give it the path to the file that you want to um, ignore the errors for, but also uh, drill down a bit, go a little bit more fine grained and say, I only want you to ignore these type of errors. So if you've never done that in PHP stand before, you've just learned something, haven't you? Okay, uh, next, what did we do? Then we were on sort of the final piece of this, which was forwarding data to the recipient, the CRM audience grid in our case. And so for that, all it was, was a case of just adding the client, the audience grid client to the constructor of the subscription start forwarder, and then just calling post on there. And if you remember how we built this under the hood, we are just wrapping around 
the facade, the Laravel HTTP facade. But what that means is when it comes to testing this, we have this really nice facade helper where we can say HTTP fake. And so when we run a feature test, what that means is it won't really send the request. However, it will monitor the behavior. And so we can assert that one request is sent, but also we can assert that the correct data was sent. So when you're more interested in the data being sent somewhere else to a third party rather than checking the response for the data, so useful to have a tool like this which works out of the box. When I've used other frameworks and other tools, I've had to sort of create these things myself and come up with a little bit of container trickery. Laravel provides this out of the box. Really cool. Okay, where did we get to next? Upgrading Laravel version. So uh, this might be quite popular actually. I uh, anticipate because up the upgrading your frameworks, your versions is a fact of life. And really this turned out to be very painless simply because we have pretty good test coverage. We've got feature tests which cover sort of input, output, and the whole process of receiving a webhook and forwarding it. And we also have a bunch of unit tests. So all I needed to do really was go to my composer JSON. I updated my Laravel framework version here. And then I ran composer update, simply composer update. That one and did all the updating. Then what you've got to do, you've got to check your composer lock file to make sure it does contain the version that you expect. So I've got a search for framework here. As you can see, Laravel framework is now on version 12. And then the final piece of the puzzle really was just to run composer test. So if you remember the test scripts that we have in our composer JSON file, which runs all of our tests. So under the scripts section in composer JSON, running PHP stan and also PHP artisan test, which in fact will run our pest tests. But you could have more things in here. You could have code sniffer, you could have mess detector or some rector stuff or anything like that. But uh, composer test will run all my tests, which is PHP stan and pest run those after upgrading and then we can see that nothing breaks and because of the test coverage we can have pretty good confidence so a successful upgrade there and like I say can be a bit of a pain if you're creating a course and an upgrade comes out halfway through but let's face it upgrades are a fact of life and so it's good to include this in the course and I hope that you get some value from it when you come and uh, take part in the course then what do we do? All right, we finished off Microsoft with microservice error handling because handling errors or monitoring errors in microservices can be a challenge. If you think about like a monolith, just a big application, you're sending requests at it, returning responses, and you've probably got a human who is looking at those responses. Whereas with a microservice, it's just one part of a big architecture you don't want it to fail silently and you know that something's going wrong in your system but you don't know what and so we talked a bit about um, how to handle and log errors to a centralized mechanism when you're building uh, microservices so we created a couple of um, custom classes so first of all i created a contract for error handling so under contracts I just create this, just one method on there, handle, takes any throwable. But what that means is I could have two versions because in development and testing, you want your errors, your exceptions to bubble. You want to know about them. But in production, with, especially with a microservice, you definitely need to handle things in a different way. And so you need to log things to a central mechanism, which... Uh, even though we've not included like Sentry or Datadog or anything in this, we've sort of mimicked it here just by putting some comments in saying this is what you should do in reality. But really, uh, we're just doing a bit of logging. But it's just to really show you the differences between 
how you handle and how you log errors in a microservice versus how you would do them in just a normal web application. And that kind of rounded off the week. And so got a little bit more to do in here. Need to um, do some work on binding the error handler, the correct error handler to the container for different environments, which I'll work on this week. And then, well, we are starting to work on the actual web application sort of mock CRM, which is going to be like a dashboard which shows these values. And so we'll be able to fire requests which go via the microservice and then into our sort of dashboard app and we'll be able to see the values, the properties being updated in that service or in that application. So uh, hopefully you found value from this. Hopefully there's something in there which entices you to want to enroll in the course. Not long to go now. The release date is 31st of March. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.